A good afternoon to you, rugby fans. Welcome to Houston, Texas, H-Town. It is the National Collegiate Rugby National Championship weekend, and this is the Rhino Bowl, where the Broncos of Boise State are getting set to take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. I am John Broker, joined by the contact coach, Craig Wilson. Great day out here for rugby, Craig. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. Really excited to be here. I love these games. Both teams usually go for it in the bowl game. There's going to be a lot of attack, a lot of ball in play. I'm just really excited for this matchup. Everything leading up to the big Division One final coming up in a couple hours. But right now, two teams that did very well during the season are set to match it up. Boise State, coached by Anardis Wessels with Eric Fallon on the team. And the Fighting Irish, coached by Justin Hickey with Lonnie Heater, Kruger Von Billion, Daniel Tribell, and their ATC, Matt Harmon, they want to give a shout out to as well. You see Broncos right there in the orange and the Fighting Irish. Just talking to the team under the post there, getting ready for this matchup. So, Craig, we're saying, you know, I mean, this, this is a bowl game, so nothing actually in the line but pride and win winning the rhino bowl which is a huge thing to do so we should see some good running rugby here teams ready to have a go absolutely this is the end of a long season for both teams so it's important that they go into the off season with a win and no better way to do it at the home of the houston saber cats uh, it's just going to be an excellent game i'm really looking forward to two teams trying to finish the season on a high on NCR's Friday Night Lights, we tried to uh, do Notre Dame versus Boston College. Notre Dame was under about three feet of ice on the field. So they had to cancel that game. They'll be happy to be here in this weather. Absolutely. Slightly different conditions here down in Texas as it was back then. So we're just really excited to get this game underway. Notre Dame fighting Irish are going to be trying to finish on a high. Referee is going to be Alex Hedquist taking the center referee spot for this one. Beyond Engelbrecht and Doug Corrigan assisting him. And the legend Andy Buck as the number four for today as you see Boise State can be running from right to left on your screen and Notre Dame from left to right as we're ready to get this bowl game underway Rhino Bowl ready to go here at Viva Stadium National Collegiate Rugby it is championship weekend get ready we have plenty more coming D1 championship the highlight this evening tomorrow the Cohen Cup for the small school championship and the D2 champions as we are ready to get underway here And referee Hedquist whistles to get us started, and kickoff comes from the Fighting Irish to the Broncos. Broncos inside their 22 take hold of that one. He's running the ball, what knock in there does not look like it. Referee Hedquist happy to let people play. Ball coming back from Kyle Curry. Scrum half for this team. Senior from Sacramento, California. On their own line, they're going to elect to kick this one. Put it downfield, be an attacking line out here for the Irish. Good opportunity for Justin Hickey's men to get started here, Craig. Absolutely. Great attacking position just outside the 22. And this wind is going to play a factor. So Boise State are playing into the wind right now. So Notre Dame have it to their backs. And it's an opportunity to launch their attack and try and get points on the board really early. Let's see what they're going to do. Attacking line out. Go up quickly there to Clamrock. Driving ball, ball in the hands of Chase Pierce. Pierce, the junior from Glen Allen, Illinois, moves it out. Little pass out wide. Good rush defense comes on, takes it away. Shooter out of the line, but a little too quick, according to the referee, I believe. Referee head whistles for an offside. Another opportunity here for the Irish. Yeah, just slightly offside there. You see for Boise State, they were trying to put a lot of line speed on the play, particularly in the 13 channel with Thompson. But he gets slightly offside, and this gives uh, an opportunity to Notre Dame to, to stick it over with the kick. And in the bowl game, they're going for points. Getting three points on the board. Get the board ticking over, Craig, hopefully for these fighting Irish. That's Will Lavender stepping up there. Lavender, the junior, Sydney, Australia. Scoreboard pressure is absolutely critical. It's really important in any game that you just keep ticking over. And a lot of coaches talk about entries into the 22, and you want to be coming away with points. And that's exactly what Notre Dame are going to try and do now. Little chip. And that kick is good. They are up 3 0. You see the bench there for the Fighting Irish. Say to one player, Alex Adams had to pull out today. So Emma Chavez moved into the front row for them. Jackson Graham comes off the reserve bench into the flanker spot. But Mr. Adams is feeling better sometime soon. Would have loved to play in this bowl game. 3 0 Notre Dame here at Aviva Stadium. Boise State ready to kick off. Get ready. 
Palacios getting us started a couple of minutes in to this Rhino Bowl. And then from South Bend, Indiana. A little more comfortable in shorts down here in Texas. Ball goes up, well handled. Straight up, no question about it is Chase Pierce, 20 years old, 220 pounder. Now they look to go wide. Step, couldn't get the pass away. Set up on the side and quick penalty comes there against Henry Visa. And that's a couple of penalties now for Boise State on the fence. So you can see the line speed was good once again, but they were just a little bit inaccurate, rolling away at the tackle, and that gives an opportunity to Notre Dame to kick the ball into touch and launch their attack. Push that one downfield. Good job staying inside of the Boise State half. The Broncos on defense for these first couple of minutes, but just inside the half will be this next line out. First was very steady. Ethan Zania, the senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Played Grand Rapids West Catholic Rugby. Steps up for the throw. Tipped away this time by Boise State. Good work. And while we were stopping here, we're going to throw down to Tyler Doidge in the sideline. Mr. Doidge, what's happening? It may seem like it's a little bit early in this match to start kicking for posts and taking penalty points, but as we saw throughout the matches, there's an indefinite win that is going directly from south to north. So while your half is going towards the, the go post, it's best to kick into the wind, not out of it. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tyler. Great insight from it down on the sidelines. Scrum coming after that knock on by Boise State. First scrum of the game here. Ball comes out. A little stacked runner there trying to bring him in. First break of the game there. That's Cam Teza. Teza across the 22. Bumps off a player. He's headed for the try line. Looking at it. Will he be held up on the post, on the ground? Good job, defense at Boise State. Referee Hedquist right there and calls it held up indeed. Great defense. That's another little element to the game right now. Really trying to hold people up to get that, uh, that goal line dropout. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a key point of the game. First of all, what a break from Cam Teza. He, what a brilliant little line off number 10 and then it was just he found the hole and he went through but he also held him up so if we look at this starter play here he just fades away missed tackle and great athleticism look at the size he's got the fend he's got the leg drive to get through and fair play to the broncos they got back and it's all about as you say johnny wrapping them up so he doesn't get the ball down Great defense. He's a, a New Jersey native, plays a bit with a Monmouth Rugby Club player, lifted there. Referee head quiz says it's okay. Ball comes off into the hands of Lavender. Lavender. Gets the ball away. Takes a contact. Forward pod here, looking to go a little bit wide. Ball up in the hands of Tommy Smith. Big Tommy Smith takes it in. 6'4, 205 finance major. Moves the ball on. That is Sean Moran. Good work to clear that ball. A little room on this right-hand side. If they can work it, they move to the other wing. Wings get involved early. That's Kyle Elliott. That's Aaron May finds a waiting forward. Multiple runs there for Pierce early on in this one. They come, a bit of a two on four here. Probably not exactly where they wanted to go, but able to stretch the field just a little bit more. Move back across, that's Inea. Again, they go through Nay. Lavender gets a ball out in the middle of the field. Well taken there by Jackson Graham, but knocked around back and forth. We're going to come back for a scrum off the initial knock from the Broncos for the Fighting Irish. Pretty even battle so far these are six minutes. Yeah, I've been really impressed with the Broncos' defense. Notre Dame have been asking questions. They've got forwards running off nine. They've got playmakers and then forwards running off ten. But the Broncos have matched every hard carry from Notre Dame and they've managed to get their own turnover. So a real good matchup we've got here. Coach! Look at the Jersey native. We all do Jersey. Set. Taser, studying management, consulting, and psychology at Notre Dame. Free kick coming Early. for the Fighting Irish. Early drive. Early drive. Early drive. Early drive. Just making sure these scrums are stable early on. And another one chosen here by Notre Dame. 
Yeah, good decision from Notre Dame here. So now you've got Boise State under a little bit of pressure. The referee has already called them for an early drive, which is a free kick. So Notre Dame, it's still a wonderful attacking position because the scrum half from Boise State has to stay on the side of a scrum where Notre Dame are putting in. That creates an overlap on the open side. So let's see what Notre Dame do with this ball. Notre Dame coming off the back there. McKenzie to Ney. Ney looking inside, comes off the leg. I thought of one of the players, but referee head twist says it's knock on, so it is. Well, the scrum here to Boise State. Really impressed with number nine for the Broncos, Kyle Curry there, how he worked around the scrum to get in the defensive line, and he was the main player in making sure that attack was stopped. So it was good defensive pressure, resulted in a turnover for a skill set error. So the defense coach for Boise State is going to be happy with his open in eight minutes. Coach. Curry played his high school rugby at Granite Bay. A number of these Idaho-based players at the moment are from California originally. If you look down the sheet here, the majority of the team played some high school rugby in the beautiful California before we to Idaho. Big pressure coming on. Tight head taken away there. Here comes Notre Dame. This could be a factor going on if they can continue to get this way. But Kenzie decides to try silly offload as opposed to just taking it to the ground and resetting there. Ball popping around. Referee head quiz spots a penalty. Players digging in there from the Fighting Irish. Yeah, it's really important from a defensive ruck that you're not allowed to put your hands in once the ruck has been called. If you're there first, you've got all rights to the ball. Referee deemed that Boise State had attacking ruckers there. Therefore, Notre Dame have to leave it alone. They didn't. That's the penalty. And then uh, Notre Dame are now having to defend. Let's go, boys. First line out of the game here for Boise State. That's Jack DeMora, the first year player out of Laguna Hills, California. Played for San Clemente in high school, San Clemente High School. Nice little break there off of a little bit of a messy ball. On the move are the Broncos of Boise State. Haven't had much offense to speak of so far. Waiting forward pod. Ripped away by one of the Irish. Tackles complete. The referee says release. illegally, however, and we'll come back. Another penalty for Broncos. Things are starting to swing the other way, penalty-wise. Yeah, once again, a bit of ill-discipline at the tackle area there. The ball was deemed to be down, therefore the ruck had been created. You can't put your hands in, and they sw swipe the, the ball back. Not allowed to do that, so that's the second penalty. So Notre Dame have just got to watch their discipline right now. Coach Hickey will be very interested in them doing just that as this game wears on. Justin Golden, great just program up in Let's make sure we're not stepping into South the Bend, Indiana. The started, okay. Legendary University of Notre Dame. What's 99? What's 99? 99, one. Ready? Demora gets that one in, taken away immediately. Revenge is over. Jackson Graham took that one down. A little wide pass there from Ney. Finds a ground, doesn't get the room they want, but nice step coming in there. That's Sean Moran. Moran just over halfway, gets taken down by his opposite number, Dakota Thompson. With a little floater pass out there, looking to go wide, just a touch too quick as Alan Gordon gets a hold of this one. Ball up into the hands of Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith's gonna make some ground. Down and away. Also come Lavender, Chase Pierce gets his 6'1", 220-pound frame in the game yet again. And a nice little show, a nice little go. Does he have runners outside? There he does. There's Moran. He's been a danger man so far. Moran eventually taken down by Jacob Schaefer. Ball up into the hands beautifully, however, of Patrick McKenzie. A referee says, let's take a second to figure out whether this was a try or not. Regardless of a try, what a brilliant build-up play. Let's listen to the referee, see what he's saying. My on-field decision is a try. Is there anything else to not award it? No. Award the try? Thank you. It looks like we're going to give the try really well worked. And there was a wonderful bit of shape there between the forwards and the backs, and then the opportunity opened up. The ball got into Sean Moran's hands. Look, he just he's really rides the tackle really well here. Excellent play, but then it's the offload, and that's what allowed the breakaway to happen for number eight, Patrick McKenzie. Brilliant try from Notre Dame. McKenzie, the sophomore from Wilmington, Delaware, touches that one down. Good high school rugby for him with MD15. 
McKenzie gets his off first the try of the day here. Done. Points Get on the board. The Kick to Thank come. You. They're He's up here. by eight. Opportunity to push this forward from Lavender. Sydney, Australia born. Fly half. And Lavender slots that one. They're up by 10, looking strong so far, the Fighting Irish. Yeah, really, really impressed with their structure. You see off nine, they've got three forwards who are running hard. And then on the next phase, it's 10 to goes off 10. And that's exactly what happened here. A little show and go. Great support here for Moran. And I just love how he rides this tackle. Great tackle. But then the offload and the support. And that was brilliant from McKenzie. And he's still got a lot to do. Big pull, reaches over try line, gets his try a team, team a try. Kickoff to come here from Boise State Broncos. Looking to get themselves down into the fighting Irish half here. Win may play a factor at some point. It's back by goal. High kick goes back Broncos way. Having to go down on it is Kyle Curry. Curry gets it set to Mora. Hooker steps into the distributor role. He's going to pick and go there. The referee has spotted. Started her whistle. My apologies. Now to a waiting set of forwards there. That's a big fella, Quentin Goss, senior, 6'3, 265 from Fresno. Takes that one in. Turned over in the contact by the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish, offense and defensive pressure looking strong here today as McClamrock takes that one in. Still Tennessee native. Referee Headquist. Spots a high tackle opportunity here just to move the chains a bit for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, great turnover at the at the breakdown there. It looks like it was that man number six, Jackson Graham. He got over the ball, great technique, and then they could launch their attack. That put pressure on Boise State. They didn't get the tackle technique right. It was too high, and then there's the penalty. So you can see how they're building off nine to that strong forward carrier. That sucked in the high tackle, and then it allows them, as you say, Johnny, to work themselves down the field. Ball up for Notre Dame. They shoot the line out so far. Comes down into the hands of Douglas Barnes, wearing number 25, playing in the second row. Go straight. Out there from Curry. Curry gets it to one of the big boys. Come back. Rock formed. Too many, blue, too They'll many. Play with their hands in. I don't know if he's going to try to go back to that uh, nearly a lifting penalty. Didn't seem so bad, but they'll take this one. Yeah, and that's the third, third time now Notre Dame have got hands in the ruck. Let's listen to see I what he's going to say. I appreciate you guys being aggressive with the breakdown, but I need to have a clear release okay. before you're going for that. Yes, sir. Result. Yes, sir. Just, just clear release. Very polite. Yes, sir. Yeah, so as we can see here, they're putting a lot of pressure on at the breakdown. They are trying to force those turnovers, but you've got to do it legally. So although that tackle looked like a tip, it was absolutely fine. And then he deemed that he was, had his hands in the ruck. It was a tight one, uh, but Notre Dame now have got to be really careful at the ruck. Isaiah Cortez, the first-year player from Sacramento, California, the Granite Bay player in high school, is going to come off the field. Played some rugby with Ira. After the game. And in his note says he loves his mom. So as he's going off the field early, can, just want to just shout out. understand you. <laughs> Absolutely. We've got a shout out to the mums. They give us a, an opportunity to get out there. And to all, all our supporters who uh, have made this day possible. Dylan Marsh comes on the field as a replacement. Wearing number 17. Long kick. Will it find touch? It does. Be a line out just inside the half of the Fighting Irish. Boise State just needs to get together some phases and some rhythm here, Craig. They really haven't been able to get into their offensive shape. You're absolutely right. They've been starved of possession right now. Once they have had it, Notre Dame have been putting on the pressure. So it all starts with a line out. It's a very tough day for the line outs. Just take a look at the assistant referee's flag. That's really flying here. So that makes life a bit more difficult. Messy it is. Looks like a 1980s line out going on right there. It's a knock on by five. Oh, the back of the knock. Going to be a scrum here for Boise State. Last scrum of theirs. Driven off well by this very, very strong forward pack from uh, Notre Dame. We'll see if they can repeat. Yeah, very well drilled in the scrum initially from the first few that we've seen. So it's important that the Broncos just get themselves all connected. They don't necessarily need to go forward. They just need to be connected and strong and just really secure that ball. So that man, number nine, Kyle Curry, can get the ball in and out and they can launch their attack. 
You don't want good angles. Come on. Shane just brings it up. That's all 16 minutes gone in the Rhino Bowl here at Aviva Stadium in Houston, Texas. National Collegiate Rugby Championship Weekend. Stay tuned after this Brown versus Queens for the D1 Championship. That's going to be a great one. Two, two teams who are on form who absolutely deserve to be there. Can't wait for it. Keep with this great one at the moment as Scrum halves battle as they do, but gets it away. It does Kyle Curry. Boise State right at halfway. Turned over again. Penalty awarded for not releasing against Boise. It was a clean turnover, but it seems they just forced the penalty there. Fighting Irish able to get back down into the Boise State zone. Yeah, Jack Wilson there, the captain for the Fighting Irish. Wonderful technique. If we if we manage to see the replay, absolutely brilliant how he's the first there. So we can see the tackle. Look how he's low. He's got a wide base. So even when the pressure comes from the Broncos on the clear out, he can withstand it. Absolutely textbook. Huge play from the captain. Kyle Elliott waiting for his turn to run out there. That player has come down for Boise, so it should be pretty straightforward up to Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith from Naples, Florida. Went to Del Barton High School, which is in New Jersey, so must have moved there at some point. Good rugby program there at Del Barton. Nice run around. There's your man. Craig's been talking about him. Is he going to get over? He does. Sean Moran, the senior from Rutherford, New Jersey, from Don Bosco Prep. Touches down for five. Absolutely, and we all love a starter play, a launch play between the backs and forwards. So initially from the line out, they bring it down off the top. And it was a wonderful pass from Lavender to get that ball into the wider channels. And what we call it, Sean Moran, we call that an overs line. He's just running an outside line. He gets the ball with his right hand so he can withstand any inside pressure. He rides a tackle like he did last time, has a presence of mind to get up and continue on. And absolutely beauty straight from the training paddock. Nice goal with the Bergen Barbarians in North Jersey. Don Bosco Prep, just a tremendous all round sports high school. They were national football contenders every year. They're just phenomenal. Yeah, and you find the best rugby players tend to be multi-sport athletes, so that's really cool to hear. Just be careful. That one is good. So we have moved on to 17 to nil, fighting Irish about 20 minutes in. That was an interesting one there. It looked like Jacob Schaefer, number uh, 15 for Broncos, got his hands on that on that kick there, which is very rare. So pretty casual from Will Lavender. Let's take a look at that again. Great pressure here from number 15, Jacob Schaefer. And he gets a tip on it, and he managed to get it over. I mean, a little bit of afters, but it's all good between those men. Uh, good little contest there. I want to see Jacob Schaefer take off that, uh, that scrum cap. It looks like a pretty good mustache he's got going on there. For sure. Long, uh, not a long one, just short, come down to Pierce. Pierce happy to take it. Pierce doing a lot of the hard yards so far. Take the Glen Ellen Ducks in high school. He's invited to a USA U20 training camp, so on the radar. Nice kick back. There's the mustachioed man. Jacob Schaefer takes that one. Schaefer, senior from Sacramento. Another one played at Granite Bay. He's been pipeline coming through to Boise from that program. A penalty against the Fighting Irish, not rolling away on Ethan Zin Zinea, excuse me. Yeah, it's just important that there's a few ruck penalties started to increase there. This one was the first time they weren't rolling away. And for those of you newer to rugby, it's just really important when there's a tackle contest, that tackler must get away from that ruck. So there's a clean contest between the attack and defense. And on that occasion, he just wasn't quick enough. And the referee rightly blowed up for a penalty. Line out here to Boise State. A good attacking opportunity halfway through this first half here at Aviva Stadium. One of the MLR's Houston Sabercats hosting National Collegiate Rugby Championship weekend. Just about 30 meters out. Messy line out from Boise State. Goes back to their side, but taken away by the Fighting Irish. Turn it around. It's Boise State ball. Broncos on the run. Broncos looking wide here. They get the ball through Isa. Out to their outside center, Dakota Thompson. 
big forward runners coming in right now, trying to just bash some holes in this fighting Irish defense. Another big runner coming in, that's Bennett Mance. Bennett Mance from Sacramento. Yet another Granite Bay player and penalty against the fighting Irish again. Opportunity here for the Broncos, but let's see what the referee has to say. Up there. He's just pushing people back for a little back chat. Yeah, we don't, we don't talk back to a referee. It's one of the core values of rugby, uh, particularly uh, with Notre Dame. They're, they're up by 17 points. There's no need, so that would be really frustrating for them. Uh, but now it puts themselves under a little sure. bit of pressure. And if we just look back at the penalty, you've got Boise State. Big running, big Make tackle sure contest. Gap, and it looks like just uh, rode a little bit high in the tackle there, number 13, Sean Moran. Blue. Um, and then Open a little bit up. of after chat. And that's the advance of the game forward. Cool, Boise you can State, step in. Certainly some sturdy looking forwards here. If they can launch yeah, a few I'm of those short. boys into some tackles, start to soften up that defense, but they have a great opportunity at just a little ways out. They can come down with it. Ball taken away, however, by Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Out to their 22. Inside. Hold blue. That one was back inside, you heard the referee say, so no problem with kicking that one out. But they're going to keep it in field. Didn't quite hit their touch. There's Schaefer. Schaefer steps. Schaefer's got a crowd of fighting Irish defenders in front of him. Stay. Away they go from Curry. Curry. It's one of those powerful forward runners. Going to work his way through. Brandon Besler. Besler, Dana, California native. Play for the Raptors Rugby Club down in Southern California. Little knock on there, winds up in the hands of inside center, Matt Prame. Prame gets the ball up to Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith takes some go forward here for the Fighting Irish. They come out to Demora. Demora's got runners outside of him. Can they move this one out? Lavender attracted some defenders. There's Moran. Moran gets through. Was he held? Referee not going to whistle that. That's fine. Time's off. They have blood, just to know. They decide to whistle that. We'll see what the call is here. I think we just have a little blood from Sean Moran. Cannot continue to walk after he's been tackled. And Sean, actually, the, the man on our screen now, number 13, Sean Moran, he has been very lively. He's been excellent in defense. So some of the work you might not necessarily see, but in attack, he's looked like an absolute live wire. He scored that try with a beautiful overs line. He's carrying hard. He's riding tackles. And he's got a busted nose for his uh, troubles. But he's he's been a real heartbeat of the fighting Irish so far. No advantage from the knock-on. Scrum blue. He'll play the rest of this one out with a big wad of sorry, sorry, sorry. some sort of fabric up his nose. Every rugby player has done that at one point, if not more than once. Coach! Scrum here, fighting Irish, 25 meters out. On that Moran break, he's going to come back to McKenzie. He's already scored one little pass, doesn't make it out there. Moran gets a hold of it, and he puts up a pass that hits the ground. Let's use it, nine. Just to reset it, they bring it through Clamrock. Web School of Kentucky. The varsity swimmer for a semester at Notre Dame. And preferred to get out of the pool and onto the pitch. Playing here for the Fighting Irish, moving across. Lavender. Lavender gets it back to McClamrock. Away they go, out to the wing. A nice little pass. They skip one. It could have used to maybe hold another runner. Referee hit twist on the spot as that ball gets knocked on. Scrum for Boise State. 25 minutes into this game, just possession all going Notre Dame way. Absolutely. It's, Broncos are really doing well on their defense, regardless, despite the score. But that was a really good defensive effort there. And remember, they're playing against the win. Okay, so there's no kicking opportunities. They can't really turn the fight in Irish around. But with that, it's also exhausting. 25 minutes in, you haven't had much ball. It's a really tough game. Notre Dame are looking really organized. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how Broncos wrestle back momentum. And it starts with this scrum. Set. Ready, ready. Curry gets us started. Little starter play in the midfield. 
That could look like I'm going to creep tie, but another turnover, however, illegally. Nine through the gate. Yeah, it looks like he copped a bit of a high tackle there, and I think he's just taken that extra minute to get up there, number 12. Out of the way. Not Listen. releasing completely. We're not coming through the gate. This is your team warning. I expect better from you all, okay? Let him know. No, let him know. So a team warning there, and that's just all that pressure that Notre Dame have been putting on themselves at the ruck. They've had in from the side, they've had hands in, and as we watch this play develop, it looked like a bit of a high tackle there, slight swinging arm, and then entered from the side there. You can't do that. You must come through the gate, and a right to so penalty. They have to be clean now because they're on a yellow card warning. Ten minutes without a player can make a big difference right now. I'm sure Boise State would appreciate it. They'd be happy to pick which one. They'd probably send Moran off the field if they could. <laughs> yes, he's been, he's been playing well. But from Broncos, don't be disheartened. Just keep trying to get this ball. I know lineouts are really tough in this weather. Just keep it simple yet effective. Ball in from Boise State. Lineout coming down Notre Dame's way. They have some big boys out there. Lavender, a little miscue of the hands. Has to launch that one over. Great kick. Rolls back there for Schaefer to deal with. Schaefer spins out of one. Schaefer it's halfway through the second. Held up in the air by the Fighting Irish. Schaefer, six foot 175, has that ball ripped away by Kyle Elliott. Kyle Elliott takes it in the, on the march again. Come the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish get it into Zainaya's hands. Zainaya takes it in. Moran pointing off to the left-hand side. They've got runners out there. Little shape not happening for them right now as Alan Gordon gets into the game. Haven't seen too much of the fullback in this first 25. I'm sure he'll want to change that. Big break there from Zainea looking for a runner. Looking for these little offloads, Craig, but just not appearing sometimes. Yeah, I wonder if he got a little call there. Number two, Ethan Zayner, as he was carrying. I wonder if he heard from Jack Wilson, number seven, the captain, just to pass it. It might not necessarily have been on, but hey, look, really good ambition. The opportunity was there. Maybe he could have held on to it, but seeing as we're in the bowl game, why not give it a go? That's trying to apply pressure. So that was likely to be their mindset. Let's go. Scrum coming Coach. for Boise. They're going to want to get this one in and out of there quick. He's sitting in the back waiting for this. Fly half little conversation deciding what to do. Played at Jesuit High School, one of the top rugby programs in the country, high school-wise in Sacramento. Ball comes back and they move it by him. They're inside their 22, trying to regather here. They'll go for a second or third phase kick. We shall see. They're going to try to run that one. That's Dakota, John Dakota Thompson. Dakota Thompson from Monroe, Washington. Played at Eagle High School. Kick coming away from Kyle Curry. And that's an absolutely wonderful exit there from number nine, Kyle Curry on the box kick. Remember, there's a really strong wind right now that he's kicking into. But that was really well worked. He got made sure his ruck was secure. He got people around the ball so he can get a clear kick away and executed it to perfection. Now they just need to put that pressure on that line out. Line out messy again, but it's going to come down to the Broncos. Curry. Is it out? Advantage, you have penalty advantage now. Five Notre Dame regathering a penalty advantage. Player not rolling away quick enough for referee Headquist liking. Here they come again through Curry. Just a short little pass, but a hole opens up. Good line break from this Boise State team. Got runners spread across the field. Curry finds waiting forward there. Stay. Again, waiting pot of forward, coming off the nine, out the back they go. Had some runners out wide, couldn't quite get it out there. Contested by Notre Dame. Ball coming for Boise State, they're good to go there. That's the big man, Bennett Mance. We're gonna come back for the penalty, nothing happening there. Yeah, good defense from Notre Dame, but it looks like they've given away another penalty. I'm surprised they, they haven't went to the yellow card there uh, because they were on a team warning, but Really good from the Broncos. They're starting to build a bit of pressure. They're getting that little bit of go forward. Remember, they don't have any kicking options whatsoever. So that's something that will give them a lot of heart. And it, now it's all about just really tightening up these lineouts. It's been a bit of an Achilles heel for the Broncos right now. Down of those jumpers. 
six four and six three. You can see they're starting to build. They're putting phases together. Nice big strong carry there from Bergy, and then it's all about just continuing that pressure. Not sure they give away a penalty. Luckily, not lucky for them. They didn't get a yellow card. Ball coming in from the number eight. That one's clean. It's going to go back out wide. Pass in behind, however. Puts a little pressure there on Andrew Burgi. Taken away by the fighting Irish. Moran steps one. He's at the 22. Not held. Gets up and run. Or was he? Referee decides that he indeed was. Going to penalize him there. I think that's a bit close, Craig. Yeah, I would like to see that one again. It was a little bit tight. It looked like he had momentum. It wasn't held. But look, the referee had the best view, so we'll, we'll just have to take his word for it there. But uh, Sean Moran is looking pretty devastating when he gets the ball in his hands. With the penalty, Boise State moves it down. And let's just take a look here. So good defensive pressure. Nice little turnover. So the tackle comes here. Let's see if he's held. So it looks like he's not held there. He has all rights to keep going. It's a tight one. Referee decided um, he didn't. Needed to release the ball. He didn't. Therefore, penalty. Ball knocked back from Notre Dame. Gets it into the hands of Jackson Graham. Jackson Graham takes him on the ground from Kuala Lumpur. Play the International School of Kuala Lumpur. Now left Malaysia for South Bend. Big break coming on the move again. Looking for those offloads. Strong offload game coming from the team as Tommy Smith eventually gets tackled. Ball comes out there from Ney. Ney gets to the McClamrock. Two second rows working in tandem here as ball carriers. Lavender moves it out. Moran takes another hit. Certainly draws a lot of attention. Player for Boise State. Takes that one away. I thought he might have been offside, but a referee head quist right there for that one. A little pick and go from the Broncos. Big Quentin Goss from Edison High School in Fresno, California. Gets the ball down and Curry launches one high. Just gets about the 40 meter. Lavender moves it over. Teza, good run earlier in the game. Has to take that one into contact. Nay. Moves it back out. They're going to work off the 10 here. Again, looking for it there. They get the ball up to that man, Jackson Graham. Jackson Graham makes some yardage. Powerful. Moving on to the starting spot. A little illness in the team and certainly showing his wear as a loose forward. Graham, sophomore on this team. Nice break here from the Fighting Irish until the little knock-on creeps into the tackle. Unfortunate for Kyle Elliott, the La Miranda, California native. Loses that one. Yeah, that was brilliantly worked. You can see Notre Dame are really starting to find their groove now. You're seeing that they're getting the offloads in, and this was a beautiful offload here. Once we see it again, takes a little bit of contact inside ball there. It looks like for all money is through, but I tell you what, great job from Jacob Schaefer to make that tackle. He's a feisty guy. He gets stuck in, and he's really keeping his team in the game. Break here while somebody just gets a 10 and 2 by the medical crew. I turned my head for just a second with that offload and <laughs> missed it completely. Yeah, Faked me right out there, too. That was, that was impressive yeah. from, uh, from Lavender. Yeah, you can see that there's coming, though. They're really trying, like, it's not always going to stick, these offloads, but they're making sure that they're giving it a go. And I really like how it's been impressive with their footwork, uh, the ball carrier, then to extend their arms and then get the offload. But as we know, the offload is only as good as the support right, line. Play. And that's what I've been really good for fighting Irish, the support line. We're just going to watch it again. It's just the inside line. Just sees that he's in there. He really did well there, Kyle Elliott, to come off his wing. And he was a bit blind. It was a nice play and unfortunately knocked on. Uh, but fair play to uh, the defender there, Jacob Schaefer. So Kenzie hovering there looking for another little pop-up try just to walk right in. Yep. In good placement was the number eight. Almost got his rewards there, but good tackle forces the knock on. Schaefer has called him feisty. Certainly a good word for the Boise State football. As Kyle Curry gets us within, here comes a big drive from the Fighting Irish. Balls come straight out. Referee Hedquist going to get us started again. Yeah, Notre Dame are going to be back in their scrum. It's a strong, strong pat floor. It looks like a bit of an injury here. Yeah, that is going to be Jackson Graham from Kuala Lumpur. The biology major is going to have to leave the field. Placement going to come in. 
Already down a player. Due to their illness, we'll see who steps on the field for Justin Hickey's men. It's number 19, Rocco Perry from Chester, New Jersey, another Del Barton School rugby player. Time's on. Coach! Bind! Set! Referee setting us down again here on their own five meter line. That'll just be a little early drive there from the Fighting Irish, but good work by Besler. That's a man! Bezler comes off the back, gets that one in, and penalty against the Fighting Irish for coming in from the side of there. And opportunity for Boise State to get out of their own zone. Yeah, struggling to get out. Notre Dame again. That I believe they were on a penalty warning, a yellow card warning. That's two that the referee hasn't given them. So I'm sure if you're on the Broncos side of things, you'll be a little bit frustrated because Notre Dame should be a man down now. Just game, over game five box. minutes to go. Yeah, watch one. Huddle, huddle. Let's see the yeah, team let's go, we're let's gathering go. here. Watch one, watch one. Uh, a line out huddle, now part of the game. Gets them all set up. Coming in there from Pesler. I thought Demora threw it in earlier, but it looks like the number eight. Pass forward, Pesler. Yeah, it's been really tough for the Broncos line outs. So that's just really stopping their momentum in their play. And I think they need to tidy up at half time because the line out is such a great attacking platform. And unfortunately, now it's just not functioning. But that's given the Fighting Irish easy outs every single time. Coach! Boise State. Scrum here, just inside their own zone. Oh, come up. Let's go, let's go. Hold. Stability, stability, let's go. Hey, you're good. <laughs> We're all good. Let's go, guys. Another scrum coming down. Coach! Bind! Set! To Boise State. The stick pressure again could work for Bezzer to get off the back with that one. The line break out wide. Good handoff there from Dakota Thompson. Gets it to Schaefer. Running a bit sideways, taking away some space on the field. But PJ Smith going to take that one to the Fighting Irish 40. Looking for the forwards finding a set. Ball recycled. Good counter -up coming in. Slows down just a tick for Curry. Curry gets it up to Demora. Awesome. Looking to get that ball back. Just a little slow, allows the defense to come on. And they uh, need no invitation of the hooker from this Notre Dame Fighting Irish team. Across they come, Curry looking for runners. Has to slow it down just a bit. Going for the box kick, launches it downfield. Right inside the 22 of the Fighting Irish. Player calls for the mark. Referee not feeling like he should have it. So that one's going to get driven downfield. It's at the 22 now of Boise State. Across they come. Ball doesn't make it to Schaefer's hands. Schaefer finally gets rid of that one. Partially tipped in the middle of the field. Referees whistled this one. We'll come back and see what the call is. Scrum from where the ball landed, or penalty from where he kicked it? Okay. Penalty took the kicker out. at that spot, so they're going to get to take it where the ball has landed and take the scrum. Didn't exactly see what the penalty was, Craig? No, it looks like it might have been an offside call there. And instead of taking the penalty deep in their own half, they've opted for a midfield scrum, which obviously advances them forward a lot more. But it's really important that the Broncos really secure their scrum and keep it nice and tight here. But that was a really good attacking play there from Broncos. They just they ran out of little ideas just as it started to build. But uh, some good stuff there. Bind! Set! Scrum here for Boise State. Two minutes to go in this first half. Coming across are the Broncos. Well, 
out to Dakota Thompson. Across they come. Pot of forwards in the middle of the field. Reserve Dylan Marsh takes that one to ground. Dylan Marsh, a senior from San Diego. Again, make them. Release two. Ball long and back this time. A good pressure from the Fighting Irish. Just over a minute to go. Well taken in midfield. A penalty against right there. Fighting Irish opportunity here late in the half. Possibly push it downfield. Get some more points on the board. Yeah, that man, number 13, Shul Moran. He has been in the wars today. Look at him. He's bandaged it up. He's got... He's got tape coming out of his nose. Um, it looks so like that was deemed sides, uh, an unfair contest in the air. We're going to see it way now. Way too many foul play penalties, yes, way too many penalties in general. Yes, sir. I expect better. Let's make sure we finish out the half strong yes, and we start strong, okay? Yes, sir. No more. Yes, sir. Just as we just listened into the referee there, just wants a, a nice clean game. Deemed oh, yeah. it was an unfair contest in the air, nothing more than a penalty, and the game resumes. A look at that man, Moran. Somebody out there is pleased that this is the last game of the season. He needs a little healing time, it looks like. Been to the wars, as you said, playing his game in the trenches. Lots of hard work. Certainly showing himself in this one. It's going to be a line out just outside the Boise State 22 as clock winds down on the first half. Just a minute to go. We may have a little bit of referee's time. Ball comes down to Boise State with penalty. Player coming in and taking it out from the Fighting Irish off of their line out. Yeah, this is really important, much like the penalty earlier with the tackle or the contest in the air, similar to the line out. Players have got to come down safely. He was deemed that he took his legs out of the Broncos jumper, therefore, that's a penalty and it gives the Broncos one last attack. So, if we just look on it back here, you're going to see the Broncos player go up in the air. There's a good initial yes, contest, we need to make sure but that then that you can't challenge the ball it. while it's in that's the air. Okay. And the referee deemed that that's a penalty. Broncos get to clear their lines. Line out here for Boise State. We are down, down. pretty much at time here on the game clock, so almost in referee's time. That one sails pretty not straight. She went uh, with the flag there. It's easy to make that call from our, our vantage point, Greg. Yeah, it looks like the Broncos' confidence in their line out is completely shot right now. Um, it's not often the ball lands in the in the scrum half hands from the line out but that just shows you how much pressure the fighting irish are putting on the broncos and also the win and once your confidence goes in that area it's really hard to wrestle back but half time is coming up the coach has an opportunity to talk try and keep it simple and don't give up just keep working away we'll come back from halftime we'll find out what the contact coach would have said to his team we'll uh, put you on the hot seat sooner or later today craig Bind. here we go with the late scrum Sit. Notre Dame gets a ball at the Lavender. They've worked on this one before and it worked very well, but this time they go to the inside center. Matt Prame, haven't seen tons of him, the finance major from Great Falls, Virginia. Nice step from the big number eight, Patrick McKenzie. Great runs to the from this first half for that man. Ball comes down into the hands of Lavender. Lavender. Has to take it into contact himself. We are in referee's time for this first half. To the rescue come a set of forwards from Notre Dame. Just trying to keep this one alive with like some points before halftime. Out 17. Notre Dame outside the 22 of the Broncos. And that one gets kicked over, but penalty against the Broncos. We'll see what they decide to do here. They can certainly go for post, but I think one of the Broncos players may be taking a seat. Just too many penalties eventually. Yeah, we might want to look at that one back. Potentially foul play. It would be great to see a replay there. Potentially a neck roll in the challenge. Uh, it's a tough one. We're just going to look back on it now. 
just as that contest develops. Let's just see what happens. Number 17 gets up and he counter rucks here, which is completely legal. Then he lifts him away. Um, not too sure about that one, but the referee deemed it was worth a yellow card, and off he goes. And it's one of their forwards. Lavender's going to have a shot here. And I think this decision here to kick kick and take the points is a really interesting one and maybe a bit of a tip of a cap to the Broncos. They're going for the points and their defense that they don't feel they're going to get over the try line. Lavender doesn't hit that one. Broncos going to touch that one down. Referee going to whistle for the end of the half here. We're at 17-0, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish over the Broncos of Boise State. As we go out, we're going to throw down to Tyler, jo Tyler Toyge, who has Nardis Wessels, head coach of the Boise State Broncos. Tyler. Head coach of Boise State Rugby. Your defense is looking strong. They found a few opportunities in your territory. What do you got to do second half to prevent that? I think our set pieces is a big thing right now. If we can fix our line outs and our scrums, hopefully with the win, the second half, we can uh, turn some momentum back our way. And it's not like your offense isn't looking strong either, but you weren't able to convert anything into points. What are you going to tell your team going into the second half? Once again, if we, if we fix our set pieces, I think the momentum would turn a little bit. Um, just basic things, the ball's a little bit muggy here with the humidity. So just a uh, new stage, big stage for the boys. So we'll just uh, get them settled, and I'm sure they'll uh, come back with some good energy. Well, we're looking forward to the outcome. Thanks, Coach, Thanks. and good luck. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Tyler. We're going to step aside for halftime. We'll bring you back the second half of the Rhino Bowl in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. You can meet me. Handles that one. Finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, 
The perfect hit. We are the crouch. We are the bind. We are the set. We are the squeeze. We are the hit. We are Rhino. Home of the scrum. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to National Collegiate Rugby's Rhino Bowl here at Aviva Stadium, where the Notre Dame fighting Irish lead 17-0 over the Boise State Broncos. Second half coming right up. We're going to throw it down to Tyler jo Doidge, talking to head coach Justin Hickey of the Fighting Irish. Here we go. Here with Notre Dame head coach Justin Hickey. Great first half from your boys. What can you credit the effort to? Uh, they were just excited to play. It's been about a month off since we played any rugby. We're coming down here out of the snow, and yeah, they were just they were just excited to get down here and play. You're so much more to this program than just a head coach. You're super involved. What drew you to be so involved in Notre Dame rugby? Uh, I grew up a Notre Dame fan. Um, lived not too far from South Bend. It was always kind of a dream to to be there, and obviously a passion for rugby. Um, so it's dream job, place I've always wanted to be. It's easy to kind of pour yourself into it when, when it's the dream gig. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll have to do a vote of whether you or the Loyola coach has the best mustache in this tournament, and we'll keep you updated with the results. Looking forward to the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tyler. And that is a spectacular mustache on Coach Hickey right there. As you see from left to right on your screen, the Boise State Broncos kicked off. You see the wind on the assistant referee's flag. Notre Dame at their own 22 has first possession of this half. Really, they put it up in the big number eight. Patrick McKenzie, McKenzie he makes a few yards, gets across the 22. They come the Fighting Irish, stuck at their 22. Good defense. Another little offload there, gets ripped away this time by Boise State. Might be trying to get in the middle of those in this half. It was effective for the Fighting Irish in the first half. Ball comes across, waiting set of forwards. Rhino Bowl here at Aviva Stadium. Beautiful H-Town, Houston, Texas. Moving the ball across comes Curry. Curry gets it out wide in the hands of Burgi. Use it! Curry might want to go think about picking that one up. He'll leave it to one of his teammates there who was at the back of that ruck. He's got a penalty against. The Fighting Irish, and here go the Broncos. Broncos yes. on the run. They want to go quick. Walk back up in the hands of Bezler. Bezler. Takes that one down. Now we have a penalty against the Broncos. Good work of the breakdown by the Fighting Irish. Now, Craig Wilson joining me, the contact coach. I'm John Broker. This is the Rhino Bowl. Craig, 17 0. They're down. Boise State. What is the Nardis Wessel is telling them at halftime. Now, first of all, it's got to start with set piece. Line outs have been a bit of an issue in the first half. They've got to make sure that they win their set piece and put pressure on the fighting Irish set piece. And once you have the ball, just maintain it. It's much easier to play rugby with the wind at your back. So they know they're going to get a lot of ball from the fighting Irish, or a lot of opportunities to get the ball back from the fighting Irish. So it's just about getting possession, going through their phases, and finding that opportunity when it arises. Fighting Irish, off of the penalty, goes short with that one, playing the win there, Pierce getting dragged towards the line, good body control to keep that one in. 
Now they come, ball slips back, and did it get knocked on? Referee Alex Hedquist spots that one, and indeed it has Scrum coming to the Boise State Broncos off that knock on Scrum at the 40 meter line of the Fighting Irish. Yeah, this is a great attacking opportunity here for the Broncos because it opens up the full field, and also the Scrum half of the Fighting Irish has to stay at this near side, so that should be one less defender in the Fighting Irish defense. So it'll be really interesting to see how the Broncos manipulate this attack and launch their own play here. The referee sees some illegal actions there from the Broncos. It's going to be a free kick here to the Fighting Irish. Let's see what they decide to choose. I think, you know, what you said was right. They really tried to attack him with a set piece there. It just didn't work in that instance in the second half. Yeah, it's, it's all about the set piece. Set piece is your big foothold into any game at any level. You need your scrum, your line out to function. And it's absolutely no surprise here that the Fighting Irish have opted to take the scrum again uh, because it's just an area of dominance right now. It gives them an opportunity to control momentum, control the ball. Coach! Bind! Sit! Ready, 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 ready! Renee from Cincinnati, Ohio, went to St. Xavier High School, played rugby there. Ball taken away, possibly by the Broncos, but it's getting picked up by McKenzie. He scored one today. Good little acceleration from the big man. Turns it into a bit of a running wrestling match. Takes it away, gets it to Nay. Nay moves it. They're going to put that one. Looks like they're going to go out back, but they're going to stay in a little tight. Set of forwards coming down. Zainea, he's been very prominent in this game. Now they get ball wide to Lavender. He's got runners. Ball slips off with a knock-on, so advantage Guys, knock to the Broncos. And it no looked advantage. like there was some space opening up wide there, Craig, but unlucky for the Fighting Irish. Knock yeah, on. a bit of a rare mistake there from number 13, like Sean Moran, so uh, with a bit of a knock-on, but well done to the Broncos' defense. They stay connected, they applied the pressure, and they are giving themselves an opportunity here. Like, there's still a long way to go in this game, so it's all about just now winning this scrum. It doesn't have to be devastating, it just needs to be won. So all eight players in the scrum just need to be tight, connected and almost make it like a seven scrum get that ball in and out maybe nine really kyle curry can throw that ball back as far as he can it might be bending the laws but uh, you just need that ball out as quickly as possible speaking of sevens both usa men and women going into the semi-finals tomorrow at the uh, cape town sevens on the series good day for rugby in america uh, it's great to see there's been a there's been a bit of news about usa rugby lately but we've got to celebrate the, the strong wins when we get them and it looks like the sevens teams are both going well so far out in cape town and long may that continue scrum coming for boise state There's that ball, as you said, working it out. Big scrum coming on from the Fighting Irish, but full penalty against the Irish for driving up on that one. Yep. Uh, referee de deemed that Notre Dame weren't driving straight there. They were driving up illegally. Uh, that's gone against the grain a little bit, but I tell you what, the Broncos will take it. Now they've got the win. They can kick it deep down into their half, and let's just hope they fix that line out so they can launch their own attack. Schaefer puts that one away. You know, sometimes it's tough for those front rowers when you really have that pressure and that dominance and you really have to keep yourself down. It's the other player who's kind of popping up there. So driving straight, not always as easy as it sounds. Absolutely, and it's not just the front row. It's the whole team needs to be completely working in tandem and efficiency. And just one little player who goes out of position just breaks it all apart. So that's why scrimmaging is so important. And it's essentially a game within a game. Don't close it or you will be penalized. Referee head quiz, clear communication from the center ref. Doing a good job here today. Clear instructions to these players. Joined by Beyond Engelbrecht. Corrigan for this. And the referee team, ball comes out wide. Dummy runner, not quite what they wanted. There's Moran. Moran has some acceleration, but Moran finds a gap. Moran finds another space. Gets that little body moving around just to loosen up the ball. Great work as the ball comes back to Prane. Prane recycles that one. Head of steam here for the Fighting Irish. Opportunities either way for them. Ball comes at Ney. Ney moves it wide. Lavender looking around. Decides he has to hang on to it. A little bit of a man on an island. Stuck 
without players around him for a second there. Picked up by Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith moves that one on. Second row partner, McClamrock. Both of them working as key runners. Ball to Moran. Sean Moran just outside the 22. Nay comes across. A good run there. A big power coming through, drawing in some Broncos defenders. See if they can bend and not break this defensive line for the Broncos. Ball turned over there indeed, and just outside their 22 opportunity. They're going to keep ball in hand. Doesn't work out in their favor. It's a Going to come back for the knock-ons. Going to be a scrum here. Yeah, just got a little bit messy there from the Broncos. They did get the turnover opportunity. Well done to the defense. They forced the turnover, but it just looks like the players were on a slightly different wavelength there from the offload to not quite expecting it. And this gives the Fighting Irish a wonderful attacking platform to launch from a scrum play. See a very happy looking front row from the Fighting Irish, you know, have the ascendancy as your front rows all smiling as they set in. Yeah, those guys love it. They could have 50 scrums a game and be very happy. The rest of us anyway, not so much. Like to see a little running rugby sometime. Nice inside line comes. They've got a runner wrapping around, a little show and go there. That's good from Gordon. Gordon about five meters out. They got runners coming. They chase Pierce on the outside there, but they get it to McClamrock instead. But the big number three might have a shot at glory there. Take him up to Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith. A couple of players helping him in. They're right outside of the try line. Cross they come. Lavender, where's he going to go? Lavender goes back in. A nice work there by Gordon. Eventually taken down. Alan Gordon doing some good work. Big number eight looking for a second. McKenzie, but he can't get there. A little pick and go. They get another... Pod lined up here. May try to go again if they can. Have done a ball just on the other side there. You see strong defense from the Broncos. Referee's going to whistle for a knockout. However, good defensive pressure. But we'll come back to a penalty against the Broncos for offside. Good pressure there from the Fighting Irish. Be interested in what decision they make here, whether they tap and go or go for the scrum. It looks like they've got. A penalty place. Let's watch this. Jack Wilson, the captain, came in and decided he wanted to slow things down and run this play. The captain from New Albany, Ohio. Nice work back into McKenzie, and McKenzie's across the line for number two. Happy days to the number eight. Two tries in the Rhino Bowl. Absolutely, and that was a brilliant play. A little set piece play there. So from the penalty, it was a tap and go, carried to the heart of the fence, to then set of the platform. And then there's this lovely little inside ball here. It's going to be, you're going to see it when we get the replay. It was beautifully well worked. It was definitely a set play. You can see here, number nine, Nay goes across. Yes. Little inside ball to number eight, McKenzie, and he gets a try. Beautiful connection between scrum half and number eight. Wonderful to see. And the Wilmington Friends School graduate now at the University of Notre Dame studying history and political science. Will it be President McKenzie? We'll never know. <laughs> we, we will never know, but i tell you what, if that try, he can do what he wants. That was, uh, that was certainly one to watch. Oh, it's a little like daring <laughs> kicks here. Yeah, it, it looks like he touched it again, <laughs> Jacob Schaefer. It looks like um, number 10 right now for the fight in Irish. Lavender's just got a little pitching wedge out, and he's just teasing those players. But, hey, I tell you what, that says a lot about Jacob Schaefer as a, as a character, that he's still chasing down these kicks for his team. And he's got his hand to it again. As we look back on the try, you can see Nay a little, we call it a little scoot across. There's McKenzie just hovering on the blind side. Powers over the try. Really well worked there. Oh, there's a beautiful Houston sunset as we prepare for that sun to drop in the Division I championship game between the Brown Bears and the Queen University Royals. Coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central here at Aviva Stadium. You'll have a contact coach and myself with you for that one as well. Very much looking forward to it. There's a lot of game to be played here. So let's see how this one finishes up. A clam rock. Once again. Nay. Lavender's going to come back to this side. 
rolling that one. He's not going to find a 50-22, but he's going to find some purchase. It'll be a line out for the Broncos. Outside the five, son. Inside their own 40 meters. Yeah, excellent kick. He kept it nice and low, so it took the wind out of it, and also it bounced into touch. And as we recall, the Broncos have been really struggling with their line out, so it really isn't a big deal right now for the Fighting Irish to have a defensive line out. Because well, they've been getting the ball back quite a lot, to be honest. That was a really clever kick from number 10, Lavender, and that heaps the pressure onto the Broncos. Up, taken away by the Irish. Strong set piece again. The men from South Bend. Back. Takes a little still. The captain gets a hold of it. He wasn't held. Jim Wilson gets to the ground. A little room out wide. Thought it might have been a player outside, but a hole opens up there, and Gordon's through it. Gordon has some runners, but he's going to step in himself. And Schaefer just has been tremendous back there. That wasn't Schaefer. Sorry, one of the back three. Schaefer trying to make that tackle, but try awarded. And it is Matt Prem who is going to touch that one down. Prem, a sophomore from Great Falls, Virginia. Absolutely beautiful play. It all came from that defensive line out. The Fighting Irish have been winning that battle the whole day. And then they get the ball out to Lavender, number 10. He gets the ball into the wider channels and just if you check back, Alan Gordon, number 15 for the fight in Irish. This was a beautiful line to carve through. We'll see it here just off Moran. That is a stunning little line. And then the presence of mind to keep the ball alive. There's the offload. The fight in Irish have been doing it all game. Number 12 gets a try. I have to correct myself, that was Schaefer making both tackles. He yeah, made the covering tackle. Then I saw him coming after Prem in the try zone, so I, I thought it was looking for somebody else. But yeah. what work rate? You're, you're so right, and not often get a lot of love if you're on the wrong side of the scoreline. But 15 Broncos, uh, Jacob Schaefer, he's just been brilliant, and there's a lot. And look, so we watch this one again. It looks like he's going to charge it down. <laughs> Oh, he gets it again. Is that the next time? It's unbelievable how these kicks are going through. But fantastic. Oh, what a lovely little game within a game we've got between Schaefer and Lavender. Uh, looks like Lavender's just teasing him right now, but a lot of respect from Schaefer in his work. Boy, it is that low-hanging kick. That's something else. Yeah, he's pretty relaxed about it, but they're going over, so there's not a lot you can say if they're, if they're going through the post. 31 to nothing now in the Rhino Bowl. Go, go, go. Rhino, great sponsor of National Collegiate Rugby, playing here in the Bowl Series. Aviva Stadium crowd starting to build in anticipation of the big one coming up, but this game, great Backwards. skills on show. That's just skills on offer. There's Pierce, Pierce. Hasn't taken a backward step, the big number three. May is going to chip that one over, but blocked by Boise State. Out, out, work back on it. <laughs> ball there against the Fighting Irish. Bit of trouble going back on that ball. Tried to go quick. Did Curry, but brought back by referee Hedquist. Yeah, if, if, if I was the Broncos here, I would just tap and go. The scrum's not functioning, the line now's not functioning. Looks like Kyle Curry is going to do exactly that. Just get the ball in play, just ask questions of the fight in Irish defense, and it all starts with a big hard run here. Good decision, in my opinion. Miss Q in there, however. Second Miss Q in the back for the scrum to the fighting Irish outside of their 22. As time starts to wind down. Good, Blue good decision, but uh, the execution go, just wasn't there. And I think fatigue's starting to set in now from the Broncos. And the Irish, they, to be fair to the fighting Irish, they're just they're just a lot more organized. And it looks like they've go, got boys. the fitness as well. They're a very well-drilled team, very well coached by Justin Hickey. And that's been a massive part in this game, just the consistency on defense. And then they're taking their opportunities on attack. Just really well coached. Baptist comes in, Daniel Baptist, a junior from Cincinnati, Ohio, at the St. Xavier High School. High school rugby there, great school. On the wing he is, ball comes out. Little midfield wrap around, they're looking to go wide. They get the whole ball in Baptist's hands immediately, using the full width of the field. But dragged into touch they are. It'll be a line out here just outside the 22. Probably not the right option there from the Fighting Irish. Yeah, there's probably not a bad option to have a go. 31-0 up. 
coming towards the end of the season in the bowl game, but they just lacked a little bit of go forward there. The Broncos' defense was able to shift across. They weren't really threatened, and Coach Hickey will be looking back at that one going, let's get a little bit more go forward or someone add in a bit of, a bit of energy into the line, much like Alan Gordon did in that last play. The Broncos got the ball back. Fair play to them. Guys, that's not five. The front, but no good there. Four <laughs> five, Boise guys. State. As I thought he was going to spin move that one, but we're going to come back. <laughs> Choice here for the Fighting Irish. Players floating it up off. for the Broncos. It'll be a yeah, free kick. Looks here. like fatigue is setting in now. A lot of tiredness, particularly from the Broncos' Probably point of view. And it, it's here. really, really tough back. when you don't have a lot of Again. ball and the set yeah, piece isn't minutes, going as strong. And if we just play this back, they're trying to mix it up. A little strong set option. play, a little trick play strong nearly option. came off. And unfortunately, it deemed a bit of a forward pass there, potentially, or not straight the in the needs throw. To be the tunnel before and the it ball looks like it's going to be a, a Notre Dame fighting Irish scrum. Scrum rock steady for this fighting Irish team. Coach! Come up. You need to make sure that your shoulder's through. You can't be sunk so deep. Okay? Flat. Continue to make sure we're set. No, it's just really good uh, work here. They're just resetting, and the fine Irish should be really happy with this. Nice and slow, controlled rugby. And it gives them a chance to reset, rebuild, and get all eight men pushing in the right direction. Ball across for the fighting Irish. Firing Irish, hang one high. Ball bounces back into the hands of the Irish. Good move for them right here as they come across midfield. Looking for it, they are the captain. That's Wilson picks that one up and goes. Great work. Right over the 50 meter line they go. The ball, the second row has been very effective all over the place. Gets it back to Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith over the 40s, about 30 meters out from the Boise State line. Looking to add to this lead already. Nice work as Matt Williams. Takes that one in, reserve hooker for this team. Nay, still in the game. Nay moves it out to the Clamrock. The second row is impressive, a lot of carrying today. Yeah, big, big carriers. They're always making yards. Fair play to them. Just a little knock on creeps in, so it'll be Boise State ball. The Fighting Irish are looking strong when they're keeping the ball nice and tight. They're, they're big carriers, as you say. You've got number four, Tommy Smith, number five. Michael McClamrock, they are really getting some good yards. But the Broncos keep no coming at every now and then. They're coming up with a big defensive no play. And that's because they're getting off the line and they've put a lot of pressure on. And it'd be good to see them just get the ball for a little bit longer, see if they can launch something and just really give them something, give their team something to cheer about. At their 40 meter line, Boise State. Both sides, both sides are closing the gap. A little. Second best in the scrums. Here here. Yeah, scrums, are just it's been tough on today. Scrums and line outs. I uh, mentioned it before, almost Kyle Curry, number nine. He just wants to get that ball in and out, much like sevens. If I was him right now, I'd be testing the edge of the laws. For, throw that ball back to the number eight and see if we can get it back. See if the referee picks up on it. Uh, let's see how the scrum de uh, develops. Get the referee to look away for a second. If the ball does come back, Bezler off the back quickly. Bezler makes a good run. Bezler gets into that Notre Dame defense. Ball to Curry. Curry has to go in and clean up, so Wing is going to step in there. Here's P.J. Smith. Thank you, Blue. Curry back up. We're looking for a big boy. Finds one. Nice move there. Ball up to Barnes. Douglas Barnes into contact. A little pop-up pass looking a little stronger here. Burgey. Rhino Bowl here at Aviva Stadium. Just three quarters of the game gone. About 19 minutes to go. Good tackle there from the Fighting Irish. Off they come. Little chip through. What endeavor from one of these Boise State forwards. Nay on the spot, however, gets to the Lavender. Lavender steps a couple. Let's just launch that ball back. And it slid forward, however. 
come back here Orange for 14. probably a scrum to Boise State. Have to see what the referee calls. Yeah, it looks like Bennett Mance there, number seven. six, just mix it up. Five. I'm a big fan of that kick through because the fighting Irish defense has been pretty strong. So why not change the script? Why not? If you're not going to go through them and you're not going to go round them, why don't you go over him? And that kick was a wonderful opportunity. We we'll put him under pressure. If we just look back on it here, it just puts the ball through. It just tees it in. And we all know a bouncing rugby ball is an absolute nightmare to deal with. And to be fair, they did it well, but it was a follow-up tackling pressure what forced that forward pass on the offload from the floor. And again, they've just advanced. So a really great bit of endeavor there from the Broncos trying to make something happen. Player just being attended to yeah, here. Another sub. Let's get him on. Quist so, asking yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody would like to come and play rugby with these boys. As reserve comes in Thank for you. the Fighting Irish. Number 17, Roberto Cerda. Cerda from Edinburgh, Texas. The Robert Vela High School. Coach! Bind! Set! Ball in from Boise State. Big pressure coming on from the Fighting Irish. They've got the penalty advantage in the scrum. McKenzie double try score brings it out to the 40. They're going to want to run this one. The boys are having some fun now. Big, powerful run comes in. Nay moves it away. That's Pierce. Pierce has done so much today. Chase Pierce. Taking the hard yards, looking to come over as Lavender. Does he find the space? Look at the offload. That doesn't materialize either. Ball coming clean for the Fighting Irish. Off they go. Off the ball to Sarah, to the new man on the field. Across the Broncos. Midfield. Pop back there into the hands of Matt Williams. Matt Williams loses that one. Ball comes up to Prame. Prame has been in the try zone. Knocked forward by the Fighting Irish. Be a scrum here for Boise State. Just a little purple patch of play right now. Not too much going on, Craig. Yeah, not too much. Both teams very tired at the end of a long season. But Broncos were excellent there. Their defensive shape was brilliant. They get in great line speed. And we saw it in the wider channels uh, probably two or three phases ago. Great line speed. And that's just putting pressure on the Fighting Irish. And the, the game, the rugby is all about going forward. Whether you have a ball, you don't have a ball, you want to be the team that's going forward. And right there, it was the Broncos who were going forward defensively. They earned the skill set error from the fight in Irish, hence the scrum. They just need this ball in and out so they can have a go. Ahead. Options either side of the field. Good shot to see the screen there. A penalty. It's not finding. And here come the Broncos. They're going to go quick with this one. Big contact coming in, offload of their own. With the ball off there to Spencer. No, again. Curry. It's it out to a waiting forward. Big bash comes in from Barnes. Curry again. A little wider this time. Trying to go out the back, but it's not going to happen. Right there. Going Marsh. Going to the left-hand side this time, a little wider. Looking for a wraparound hole, almost opened up there for Bennett Mance. Bennett Mance, from the side. exciting Thank player you. on this team, business administration major, from caught with a penalty that time, not releasing, or a player coming from the side, one of his teammates, get a penalty here for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, Fighting Irish have been really disciplined all day, both in attack and defense, very well organized. And defensively there, they were very calm, and it forced the Broncos into sending a lot of numbers into the breakdown and having to do it quickly because the defensive threat was there. And unfortunately, from the Broncos' point of view, they came in from the side. They didn't come through the gate. That's enough to give away a penalty and give uh, the Fighting Irish a chance to, to get this line out and get themselves into an attacking position. Good line out there. Smith, throwing all rounder. Baptist takes the first receiver spot. A couple of dummy runners are trying to open it up for Moran. And they have, there he goes. Moran, can he get by him this time? No, he cannot. That man right there has been so tremendous. The back has Jacob Schaefer, also a phenomenal wolf, Owl Hunter, as well as a great fullback. He needed to know. That's fine. Pressure coming in from Boise State. 
Just a little <laughs> lost no, discipline. No, no, no. I was going to say for Notre Dame, but they're not rolling away against Boise State, so penalty for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, wonderful line break there from number 13, getting that ball into the wider channels. He just looks so, even though he's a, he's a smaller guy, but he's built really well, very athletic, and he glides when he has the ball. And what I really like about Moran as well, it's not just taking the tackle and going to ground. He's always trying to keep the ball alive. And he got that offload there to Cam Taser, and it was just a brilliant bit of play, and it just gives them team field position. And if we're just looking here where the penalty came from, it was a good counter ruck initially. So you've got to stay on your feet and you've got to roll out of there. And the referee deemed that ball wasn't playable illegally from a Broncos point of view. And then the Fighting Irish have got a five meter line out from the penalty. Time's on. Line out here as you see the beautiful South Texas sunset in Houston back there. A beautiful part of the world, certainly. That one not straight. We're going to come back to a choice here for the Broncos. I don't know if they really want to scrum on their own five-meter line against what they've been dealing with. Uh, pick your poison, to be honest. Do you want the line out? Would you want the scrum? I think you would definitely have to go scrum. Uh, but it's one of the toughest places to be attacking from on your own five-meter line in the corner when your scrum hasn't been functioning. But I tell you what, the Broncos, though, they've got a lot of heart. They've got a lot of character within this team, particularly number nine, Kyle Curry. He's a, he's a leader of those guys. And uh, they're going to keep playing all the way to the end. So it doesn't matter where they are, they're going to give it a go. Just, just a lean. Just as this scrum resets there, take a, half set back a good opportunity for the teams just to get reconnected, make sure there's a stable platform. And then number nine, Kyle Curry, is going to try and get that ball in and out as quickly as possible. Just as we've got eyes on there, number 12, Matt Prane. He's been really industrious all game. He's been working hard for his team. And it's just been a great effort all around from number 12 there. There is that little left-handed throw right to the number eight's feet there. So they are going to get that going. Curry's going to have to take that one himself. Got players right on him. Good defensive poach attempt. And it does not work. Player wasn't holding his own weight off the ground there. So penalty for the Broncos. That will work out for them. Yeah, really important when you're going to jackal the ball or poach the ball or steal the ball, whatever your team calls it, you Behind. must maintain yes. your feet. Rugby is a game played on your feet, believe it or not. And even though he was going for the ball, it looked like he could have went off balance, therefore off his feet. Easy call for the for referee. Blue. Blue, you guys are on the line. Inside foot on the line. Yeah. Orange open up. Gold open up. It'll be interesting to see if we try one of their trick plays here. Last time, number yeah, le number eight, ball, Brandon Besler, he tapped the ball on his head. That was a little cue as a trick play, but it looks like they're going traditional. Let's see if they can win the ball, and they do. Good line out that's been, as we said, tough for them today, but they're inside their 22. They're going to go around the back, look to get some width here. They go to the boot. Get it across the 50, across the 40 balls, rolling. That's Teza, Teza, Teza. Looking for somebody to offload to. No one materializes. Takes it in contact. Nay. Looking for some runners. Counter rucks coming in. Trying to destabilize that tackle area. Nay, a little more room this time. Yeah, chase on to the boot, finding some green grass, bounces back. These kicks have been bouncing for this fighting Irish team. Great work there from Baptist, the reserve. Passing on another one of the reserves, that looks like Tom Curran. Off they come, up into the hands of another reserve prop, Liam Novak. Novak takes that one down and on the charge again come the fighting Irish. Little pass back there to Pierce. Pierce looks like he may ride out the full game today. From the, from the number three spot, but players coming in from the side for Notre Dame, turning that one over. Penalty for Boise State, the Broncos. Yeah, really unfortunate from the Fighting Irish. That set play, that attack was absolutely brilliant. Um, really good in transition today. So from that bouncing kick, they received the ball, the offloading was brilliant. And we often call it as coaches, KBA, keep ball alive. And the Fighting Irish have been certainly keeping that ball alive. 
Um, a wonderful attack. Unfortunately, they just didn't get their assignment quite right there. They came in from the side of a ruck and gave away the penalty and a wonderful attack and uh, opportunity there. But fair play to fight in Irish. They're really here to play and they look very well drilled in both attack, defence and in transition. Opportunity here 13. for the Broncos to push this one downfield. May just be waiting for a player to be attended enough. to here. Not if there's enough. a slight injury Number again, a 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central coming up soon. In Division the 1 championship between the, the Brown Bear oh, and the Royals of they, Queens University, they, they Charlotte here, yes. National Collegiate Rugby coming pinnacle up. of the men's game. Yeah. This yeah, it's this what a what a battle we've got in in store. We've got two great yes, teams. You've got Brown and Queens who have been really strong all year long. Both coming into this game with great form. I'm just really yes, excited. You've got Queens who are going to look to to throw the ball around a little bit more, but don't be fooled. They've got a lot of structure. And then you've got Brown who just love to scrum line out more and do what we call a lot of the dark arts really well so we've got a clash of styles and i'm excited to there but let's bring it back to this game and then you've got the number of mckenzie there who took the ball and they're off and running here come the fighting irish last week this beautiful venue hosted at the women's national championships for national collegiate rugby michigan coming out on top in division one for that one we're going to crown another championship Daniel. later, but this is the Rhino Bowl. It's 31 0 Notre Dame over the Boise State Broncos. Eight minutes to go on the game clock. The referee may have a little additional time there, but we will be winding this one out. Good bind. Scrum. Coach! For Boise State, center of the field, about 42 meters out from their line. Options either way. Have to see Schaefer get his due Keep at some space. point. Yeah. Yes, he's. I, I love his character. I love what he's about. In a in a potentially losing battle, you never want to say it. Uh, a game's over, but 31 nil with six, seven minutes to go. You've got to say that Fighting Irish might have this. But we often talk about who's got character, and Jacob Schaefer, number 15, certainly has as the coaches look on. Classic coaches pose, sitting there soaking it in. Little dummy runner comes in, they moved it out wide. Kick comes in from Schaefer, partially tipped it looked like. So it's gonna be a line out inside the Notre Dame half. Time is off for the, Bron the Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos did, they had a good line out on the last play. So that will give them a little bit of heart. It's important that we just get this ball in much like they've been doing for scrum, which has been much better lately. It's all about speed, it's all about tempo. Don't let the fight in Irish man up uh, to your jumpers. You've got to go with a bit of speed, a bit of tempo, and just try and make something happen uh, with your speed. Time is on. It's gold line out. It was last touched by Blue. Boise State line out inside this Notre Dame half. Let's see if we've got a little bit of movement here. There's, there's a bit of wind there, as you can see from the AR's flag. And let's see if the Broncos can get this ball. Ball down. To Boise State, big bollocky run coming here from the Broncos. Move it out just a little wider this time into the hands of Jack Demora. But a good game has the hooker. Let's see how effective this Boise State team can be. We're going to come back for a penalty against the Fighting Irish, some of late penalties. A good mix of young and experienced players on this Boise State team, certainly building a program as an artist Wessels. Looks like they're going to launch, they're going to tap and go here, try and launch their play. The Fighting Irish are getting set up for a big hard run. Got to have a bit of fun at the Rhino Bowl. The space opens up for Douglas Barnes. A little wrestling match. Notre Dame trying to pull this one away. Ball's up in the air, so it will be a Notre Dame scrum if they can maintain this, but goes to the ground. Referees whistling it up. It's going to be a Notre Dame ball. Six minutes to go on the game clock. Yeah, that man, number 13, Sean Moran. We've seen him in attack in the open spaces, but my word, he's tough as well. He got himself in there and held that ball up. He kept the tackler up off the floor, so that means it's called a maul. As soon as it's called a maul, as soon as it goes on the floor, unlike a ruck, you don't have to roll away. You stay in there and you get the reward of the scrum back to your team. Beautiful stuff there from Sean Moran. 
Coach! Hey, come here. Bind! Kevin, go get that block. Nay still on the field. Scrum half, Aaron Nay Sr. Pursuing medical school, wants to win a sports medicine. After his time here at Notre Dame, referee's going to bring this one back. Have them take it from the mark. Hey, go, go! Looks like a potential high tackle there when that ball came out and gives number nine, Kyle Curry, for the Broncos an opportunity to attack. And if you're Broncos here, you really want to be speeding up. The fighting Irish defense has been very organized the whole game. So you want a bit of tempo, quick ball from this ruck to see if you can find a few edges. Some of the big boys are the Broncos. Broncos on the move looking for that consolation try. Get it up to Demora. He's going to make some room. Good, powerful run. Players got a release there from Notre Dame, and they do. The counter ruck, but not happening. A little show and go. Coming inside is P.J. Smith. Take Smith. Taken to the ground. Jumped a bit forward. Referee was going to let it go. Gone over to the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish looking to maintain the shutout here as we're at four and a half minutes left on the clock. Ball back. Just to the safety of touch now. The line out for the Broncos outside of the 22 of the Fighting Irish. Yeah, not a bad effort there from Fighting Irish at all to get that ball back and to clear it into a strong wind. And let's see if they can get the ball back from, from this line out and launch an attack. But it is a great opportunity for the Broncos. They're really starting to knock on the door now. Let's see if the Fighting Irish can keep a shutout, or the Broncos can make sure they're going, going home and certainly finish the season. It looks like they've called a trick play. I saw the tap on the head. Let's see if it's a short ball. It is. And they're off and away. Wiley contact coach, just reading those signs right there. Yeah, you always want to look to see what they're doing, to see if there's plays. Um, yeah, fair play from the Broncos. That ball goes back, Broncos still alive, but a little stagnant both teams, as he said, long season, 76 minutes, 77 minutes into this one. Almost ready for the off season. Hopefully enjoy at least one day here in a beautiful sunny Texas. Curry moves it across in that first receiver position. Again is Smith. Gets it off to a waiting big unit. And there is that very active hooker. Gamora one more time. Jack Gamora penalty against the Fighting Irish. Curry's going to go quick with this one. You can guarantee you that. He'll pop up looking to go towards the try zone. Ball is spilled. We're going to come back for a penalty. And one of the Fighting Irish players may spend the rest of this game on the sideline with the yellow card. Yeah, it was that potentially a not ten call, but great play from Kyle Curry. Just a tap and go once the penalty was there. He knew the fight in Irish were not going to be back ten. And this is definitely the best opportunity they've had to try and score. It'd be interesting to see if it's just a tap and go, old school run and carry. But they've got to look after the ball because the fight in Irish are waiting for him. The big run. Thank you, thank you. Player rolling away. Really a determined defense here from this Notre Dame team to maintain the shutout, which we would be happy if they do. A little pop up there to Barnes. Barnes rolling around. Barnes by the corner flag. See the try line just behind. Counter coming in. Who's going to come back to? It looks like it's going back Notre Dame way. Good work inside their own zone. Good patience on defense. Tackle release. Push him up. Stay, guys. Oh. Winding this out. Two and a half minutes on the game clock. Broncos holding this one up, and they've taken this one away. Referee is fine. Says, let's play. Ball up into the hands of Brody Cast in the game. Curry again on the line. Keep your feet. Another tackle from the Irish. Really working hard for this one. Oh, stop, Levin, stop. Put that one himself with a little show of the ball, but the defense closes down. They come back out there into the hands of Albright. Albright moves it out to Schaefer. Schaefer. From the back, from the back. Driving towards, referee calls it a mall. It's there. Ball comes down, comes back Broncos way. Barnes. He's a big unit looking for the try zone. Isn't quite finding it there is Barnes. 6'2", 220, criminal justice major. 
Over the line they go, but the referee doesn't spot that. For a minute and a half on the game the clock. It's going to be a scrum it. for the Broncos at the five meter line. Holding firm are the Fighting Irish. They sure are, the Fighting Irish, and uh, they've been working really hard, and it's, it's been brilliant to see, and both on the men's program and the women's program, Chago over there, the coach, they've got a great rugby program over at the Fighting Irish, um, and you can just see it's coming through, particularly in this game with their defense. Um, they're gonna, it's been really strong for them, and fair play, but they've got one more stand to do. Coach! Nine, let's go. Bind! Five meters out. I would expect to see Bezler come off the back with this. Let's hold. I know. Come on, boys. And Craig Wilson, the contact coach. We've had a lot of good players out here today, but we need, we need an MVP. Honorable mention, first of all, goes to number eight, Patrick McKenzie with his two tries. But for me, Sean Moran has just been the heartbeat of this fight in Irish defense. Number 13, he's been strong defensively, brilliant in attack, offloading everywhere. MVP for me. Bezler looking for the line, looking for the last gasp here. We're five seconds away from being over on the game clock. We may have a little bit of referees time. 80 minutes, the referee team decides when our game is going to end. Looking across, get that ball out to the hooker, but he puts it in behind, does Demora. Next mistake could possibly end it here. Player over the top there is Ney. The ball gets knocked forward. And referee Headquist whistles us for the end of the Rhino Bowl. 31 to nil. Notre Dame has taken over Boise State here at Aviva Stadium. Stay tuned. We're going to step away for a little bit, but again, the D1 National Championship, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, coming to you from Aviva Stadium, National Collegiate Rugby. For the contact coach, Greg Wilson, I'm John Broker. We'll see you back here in just about 25 minutes.